Hey guys, I'm just giving it a few seconds for folks to get on tonight. Welcome to everybody who's out there. Uh, always look forward to this, and I'm glad to uh, see you guys popping up over there in the corner. Um, <clears throat> hey, Jason, glad you could make it tonight. Hey, Rob. Looks like we got a bunch of uh, bunch of folk builders in attendance so far. Um, so you know, this is if you get a chance to check out the AFA's YouTube channel. I've started to put these after the fact on there. Uh, this last month, I've loaded a lot of things on the YouTube channel. So go ahead and check that out. We got a link on the website www.runestone.org if you want to listen to any of these from past months or other videos I'm trying to put up on there. Um, and yeah, after we get this one done and over, I'll load this one up on there as well. How's everybody doing tonight? Hey, Dan. Hey, Ann. Hey, Steve. Ron. <clears throat> well, as always, um, format for tonight is, is question and answers. If you guys have anything that you want to know, any questions, anything you want me to talk about, please uh, send out a message and let's let's see what we can get answered. Um, probably going to plug it a few times during tonight's conversation, but if we have anybody listening, uh, first, anybody at all, but specifically anybody in the New England area, anyone near Massachusetts, on the 17th, I'm going to be out in Massachusetts for the AFA Fray Faxi event. Um, Stone Ship Hearth is hosting that. We are very excited to go out there and to support our Massachusetts AFA family. I'm looking forward to be there, being there and meeting you guys that I haven't gotten a chance to meet and uh, you know, saying hi to some friends that I have. This is going to be my first time that far north over on the East Coast. So I'm pretty excited about that. Excited about seeing Massachusetts a little bit. Um, yeah, so that's going to be pretty exciting. Like I say, if you guys can make it out to that, it's a day-long event. It's going to be a really nice afternoon. We're going to celebrate. We're going to have a meal, have some, some good times meeting each other and, and having some fellowship there. So if anybody wants to come out, anybody's able to come out, um, let me know. Let Cliff know. Let Derek or any of the guys up there know, and we'll get you all set up and, and get that figured out for you. <clears throat> In the, the world of events, if anybody can make it, what else we have coming up? Um, check the weekend here, but first weekend of, yeah, first weekend of September, we're having Fall Fest. Fall Fest in Minnesota is one of our very best events. This can be the fourth one. Uh, Jason Gallagher and Blaine Qualls have done a great job of hosting those and building that event. It's a fantastic time. It's great people. If you're traveling in, they're some of the AFA's very best people there. Uh, they, would, they would give you the shirt off their back, do anything to help you out. If that's an event you think you can make and you'd like to, we can get you all set up. People would love to give you some help, and we would love to see you out there. So keep that in mind, too, as we go throughout tonight's program. Does anybody have any questions or anything that's on their mind they'd like us to talk about? I notice in uh, our group today, I want to announce and you know bring you guys' attention to the fact that we now have an AFA kindred in Brazil. I think that is absolutely fantastic, and I'd love to... Welcome our uh, welcome our AFA brothers and sisters in Brazil. I am so glad to have them with us. Thank you for coming on the show tonight and, and being here. Thank you for being part of the AFA family, and thank you for, for building something down in South America. You guys are our first kindred in South America, and hopefully we can get more going on in your area. Hi, Katie. All right. So questions, questions. Anybody have anything they want to talk about or any subjects that are particularly interesting to them uh, this month or in general? 
Well, in the meantime, I want to kind of mention something we're focused, trying to focus a lot more on in the AFA lately, uh, and that's our modern Alsa True history. I've spent a lot of time over the past days and weeks. Um, before that, Alan spent a lot of time, and we've really tried to load up a lot of old issues of the Runestone and a number of other really amazing, amazing old finds from back to the Austro Free Assembly days. Um, we have things on our website from uh, in our download section of the library from the early 1980s. I've uploaded a bunch of things this week from 1985. So there's a lot of really fascinating things there. And if you guys haven't checked it out, you should go to www.runestone.org and look at that library section on those downloads. They're not terribly long, but they're fascinating looks at, at where we came from and how we got here. And all of, the, all of the work and all of the joy and love that went into uh, Steve McNallan building this for us and establishing our faith. Um, We've got a proud history, we've got a long history, and it's been a real blessing for me to be able to read those and look over those as I've been uploading them. I still have more material to upload. If you guys have old issues of the Runestone or you know anybody who does that are not represented on that website, please let me know. We would love to get that digitized and get them on there. Um, I think learning about our history is not only is it fascinating, but I think it's extremely important. Uh, for a faith that is so so very focused on history when we look at you know the ancient days of our ancestors it's perhaps even more important that we become aware of the history of you know our, our fathers and their fathers generation and the foundations of what we have today because it's been an amazing struggle and an amazing story to get here and uh, we owe those people learning about that Hmm. It's like we got a bunch of people on here tonight. Somebody's got to have a question for me or something they want to talk about. Let me take a quick look here at, at the Facebook and see if anybody is commenting on there because that very often will uh, generate a couple of different comments that I don't get on this live feed on the chat. Like I say, we're still trying to work on that. If we got anybody listening that knows about this system a little bit better so we can figure out why we missed some of the comments i would uh i'd really like to know because like i say i want to answer all your guys comments i've said this before but anybody that has um anybody that has any questions or asks anything that that i don't answer it's not because i'm ignoring you it's because i don't see it on the side and i'll be happy to go through tomorrow and later this evening and answer anything. Hmm. <clears throat> All right, Rob, I would be happy to and thank you for thank you for chiming in with something you want to discuss. Uh, Folk builder in Virginia, Rob Stam, is asking. Uh, he mentions that we have a lot of babies and families coming into the AFA. And I'm sure my wife will chime in over on the side on just how many that is, but it's been an overwhelming tide of the next generation this year so far. We've had so many AFA babies. Um, and so Rob was asking a little bit about uh, naming customs and, and newborn rituals. Probably my favorite thing that I get to do as Alzheimer Gothi is to perform a baby naming. Um, I've been lucky enough to perform five baby namings so far. And I am looking forward to doing as many as I can. Um, it's my custom when we're doing a baby naming to also accompany it with a room pull. Ideally, the night before, if I've had a chance to to hold the baby and, and get a sense of it, um, I tend to, if I can, have three receptacles for, for mead and make a little offering to Earth, 
Verdandi and Scald for blessings on the child. And that's kind of what I do with the rune pull. Um, I ask that the Norns uh, grant blessings to the newborn child. And when I pull the runes, one for each of those Norns. And I try to bestow upon that child from the Norns a gift, a blessing of, of where they come from, a blessing of where they are, and a blessing of, of where they'll go in their life and affix that child when we do the naming. Uh, very often, I'll, I'll, uh, assuming both parents are present, they'll be up there with me and the child in front of, in front of the folk. Sometimes we'll have them call up you know, close friends or members of their family and say words over the horn and I'll toast that child for the first time, bringing them in. Those runes that I mentioned that I did the pull, when I do that, I will use, um, use mead or I've also used water before to, to uh, trace the rune on the child's head and kind of imbue them with that blessing as I'm giving them their name or uh, rather as I'm passing on to them the name that their parents have chosen for them. And it's really a special time. And I also try to, uh, try to get the folk involved so that they accept this child and make commitments to be there to support that child and that new family as they grow and develop. I think it's extremely important that within the AFA and our AFA family in a bigger sense that we are there for those children and those families trying to raise those children. So they have a whole community there to support them and to bring them up in our church, to bring them up in the AFA. And so I think there's something special knowing that as they grow, they will always have a support system that way. And I genuinely mean that. And I hope that everyone else does when we say those words in all a Senate and say, hail, when we talk about what we'll do for those children, because it's very exciting to watch them grow up. Uh, Steve, you asked why the Norns specifically? The Norns are, <clears throat> The Norns are the are the beings, the the mothers that that weave together fate, that weave together weird, and give these give us all a uh, a start and a a pattern in the tapestry that we're going to weave. And they set a course and and guide us in a way. And certainly, when we're replacing a name on that child, that's when we're laying down those first layers that that or log that the child comes into this world with and the first bits of weird that will, will build that tapestry throughout their life so we think it's really important to have um to have the norns bestow a blessing upon that child and look favorably on them when they first start out it's you know everything in life is easier when you got a good head start Uh, Tobias, it's not hard to see that some, it's, but he mentions that it's not hard to see that some people have a very negative view of the AFA and drag our name through the mud. And he wants to know if there's any ideas on how to combat that. Um, I wish there was some, you know, I wish there was some grand formula that I have that, you know, we can go out and lay waste to our foes and this and that. But honestly, at the end of the day, the more that we are successful and the more that we do, the more we're going to have people detract from what we do. That's a consequence of success in doing things. It's a crab in the bucket kind of thing. If you're able to accomplish what others aren't, everyone wants to bring you back down. I think that the best thing the AFA can do and what I advise us to do is to, to set the example and to show through our deeds and who we are that we're doing something good, that we have something, that we have a spiritual value that other people would want to emulate and have in their lives and would want to be a part of. Um, it's not as satisfying as some, you know, as maybe fantasies folks have, but re in reality, that's the best way to accomplish what we're trying to do is to be that example and set the example and be consistent. 
it's very hard to get people to buy into those narratives once they know the AFA, they see AFA members, they go to AFA events and see what kind of folks we are. And uh, I think that's what we're going to be able to do that's successful. Um, so far, I've seen that be successful. I've seen a lot of people who actually look into it, actually go to an AFA event coming away with a very different perception than they may have started with. And I think that's what's going to help us out in the long run. Trouble is people don't have a, a great attention span sometimes, and it's very hard to combat he said, she said stuff on Facebook or whatever else. That's part, this has grown and I really love doing this to talk to, you know, members of the AFA and talk to my AFA family on here and it's a special time. But what this started as is a way to address those things. If there's rumors, if there's any problems, if people have concerns, it's why I come on here once a month. Now people can contact me throughout the month and I'm happy to address anything or talk to anybody who has concerns. But right here, right now, face to face or as close as that can be. I'm very happy to answer things or try to, you know, you can go straight to the horse's mouth, as it were, instead of, you know, listening to idle gossip. But those are the ideas I have on it. That's what we try to do is live the best we can and be the most noble that we can every day. And I think that does yield results and it's yielded a lot of a lot of success for the AFA so far. And I think that it's garnered a lot of blessings from our gods. Well, good, Steve. I'm glad that conversation was helpful to you. Hey, Mary, I'm glad you're on tonight. So does anybody else have anything they want to make sure we're talking about or make sure make sure there's, you know, something gets answered or something gets addressed? Uh, it could be any kind of curiosity, any kind of questions. I'm just happy to talk with you guys. So if you have anything, please, you know, speak up and let me know. Hey, guys. Um, hey, guys. Yeah, just, just checking on that. And I want to make sure, like I said, that, that I get everybody answered who has something they want to talk about. It's the first of the month, and this month we're celebrating our our day of remembrance to King Radbod of the Frisians. Uh, the story of Radbod's always been one that's really special to me. It's the feast day for Radbod is one of the uh, no, it was the first Austria True thing that I did uh, when I discovered Austria True, and it was really special to me because when I left Christianity. I didn't have something I was going to, so it was scary. Uh, I was a spiritual person, and at that point, you know, my beliefs were based around the Christian God or the alternate, you know, the alternative to that God being some form of damnation or finality or separation from anything in the other world. And that was a really scary thing, because like I said, I didn't have anything I was jumping to. Um, when I broke with Christianity, I had to make a really hard choice, but I'd realized that uh, the God of the Bible and the religion of Christianity was very contrary to the things that, that I believed in and the things that I knew to be right. And it was really scary because I got to a point where I had to, to say, well, you know, if, if God is on this side and this is who he is, then no matter the consequences, I've got to be on this side because I can't stand with uh, with this person because I realized that the God of the Bible was just a bad person. Um, and that was terrifying. And that reminds me of the choice that, uh, that Radbot had made. He'd already, you know, kind of broken with his tradition in his head and he was getting ready to step in the baptismal font. And he was all ready to do it. And, and he made the, he asked a question right then. He said, <clears throat> well, okay, but but where are my ancestors? And the uh, and the priest told him that you know his ancestors were, you know they were they were godless and also true ancestors were were going to burn in hell. And with the very real possibility in 
in his mind of spending eternity burning in hell, he chose rather to do that and be with his noble ancestors than to go to paradise and be with a parcel of beggars and people of low character. And uh, that's always been extremely poignant to me. So I'm very excited to celebrate that this month. Um, I encourage everybody where you guys are at, get, get members of your AFA family together, get your kindreds together and celebrate, have a meal, raise a horn to Rad Bod and uh, celebrate that choice he made and follow his example and find ways to enact that in your life. Uh, Matthias Futhark, I'm not sure if that's a question or just something to address. He mentions the idea of raising funds to gift uh, members' children who become 18 and need some money for a start in life as far as rent, business plans, trade schools, even college. I think that's a great idea. I think, you know, any ways we can find within our community to help you know, strengthen a member of our folk, especially somebody young and bright eyed going out into the world and wanting that fresh start or that, you know, that blessing to start life with. Just like I mentioned that we want to bestow that at a baby naming and give them the best start we can in life as a, as a child. It's very similar as they become an adult and go out into the world. Anything we can do to help support them and give them a boost to help them be successful in what they're going to do, I think is fantastic. And if, if folks want to raise money to, to give them a little something to start out with, I think that's a really great idea. Yeah, Steve, I've seen advertisements of that film and I've been kind of scared to watch it. I wasn't sure how it was. You say it's a good movie. I think I may give it a shot. Well, it's good to hear that you're going to Lane's uh, study group, uh, Michael. I'm glad you guys are talking about that, and I'm glad you guys are talking about Frith. Um, Frith was always a, an odd idea to me when I first started out because everybody translates it as, as peace, peace, let's just be frithful all the time. And that didn't really... That didn't sound that great of a thing because there wasn't anything attached to it when I was first learning and, and something that really solidified the true meaning of Frith, that it wasn't just a generic piece. It was, it was an alliance built on mutual protection. It was, it was a noble association between, between noble people to look out for each other's interests. Really learning that came from uh, The Culture of the Teutons by Wilhelm Gronbeck. Uh, I think that's a fantastic book and I would highly recommend that if anybody out there hasn't read it. It's not, uh, it's not the easiest read, but it's one of the very few books that I had to put it down every few pages and just digest something because it put it so succinctly and so perfectly um, and really crystallized a lot of things. So I would encourage anyone who can to go out and and get and read The Culture of the Teutons by Wilhelm Grunbeck. Well, thanks, Michael. I try. I, I really love doing these. I look forward to them every month. Um, I love getting a chance to talk to you guys. And, uh, and this has been a pretty cool way to do that. I hope you guys are enjoying it. And uh, yeah, I'm going to keep doing them as long as you guys are getting something out of them. And yeah, I, I look forward to it every month. So thank you. I'm glad you like it. Mm, Lucio, that's a really good question. As soon as we get off this call, I will uh, go and check that out and reread my Runatal and see about the nine strong songs. I am a firm believer in the... Uh, the runes that he speaks about, the spells that he knows being related to the to the Armin and Futhark. I, I very much believe that, that Meister von Liszt was inspired in that way and that those runes relate to that. I'm not sure how that relates to exactly what you're talking about, and I want to go read up and make sure that, that we're on the same wavelength on it. Um, 
That's okay, Matthias. Sentence fragments are always welcome. I will interpret them to the best of my ability and uh, give you what I got. Um, yeah, anybody interested in genealogy? Um, Sheila McNallan and Steve Engel, uh, both folk builders in the AFA. Sheila is so much more than that, but she is also folk building, and they do a great job with the AFA genealogy group. If you guys have an interest in that, they would love to have you in there. Uh, there we go. Here's my wife. She chimes in that there's uh, almost 20 babies so far this year. That's 20 AFA babies born to our family, into our church. That's 20 babies that we have a responsibility to help, to raise, to nurture as they grow, and to help them become the young men and women that, that we need in this world, the ladies and the gentlemen that are going to lead us into the future. So that's an amazing, amazing thing. Um, Seeing the growth of families, of women participating in the AFA, of all the children running around has been, it's just been an exponential growth, I'd say the last four, you know, four or five years. And it's been something really beautiful to be a part of. And I, I'm so very thankful of everyone who's brought their wives and children out, of all the ladies who've discovered this on their own, maybe who brought their husbands out and, uh, all of you that bring your families to our events, that's something that's you know, always one of the most special parts is when we see families and children. And any more in our pictures, that's that's a half of what we have is, you know, almost half of what we have is children running around and uh, over half sometimes is, is ladies. Uh, so uh, Will, Hoff in, uh, Hoff in Minnesota, it is coming. Is coming. It's happening. We're looking. We've had folks look at a lot of different properties so far. Getting it accomplished, getting the right fit in the right place, the right facility that's a good investment for our folk that's going to truly honor our gods and be the right thing for our people. Is, it takes a little bit of legwork, but it's good to be in the position to where we're, we're just finding the right spot. We are working on that. As a matter of fact, I've had uh, three calls today just about that. So I think that's coming up pretty quick. Um, reciprocal inviolability. That is absolutely the true essence of Frith. I'm glad that you brought up that phrase, Michael. That's what stood out to me. And that's, uh, I love that book. Well, uh, Terry, if you get the uh, get the reading glasses out, it will be well worth your while to read that book. Uh, it's one of the ones I highly, highly, highly recommend. Um, it's probably the book I recommend the most as far as anything on the traditions of our ancestors. As far as a starter book on modern Alistair True, I tend to recommend um, <clears throat> Alistair True, Northern European Spirituality by Steve McNallan is the place to start on that. But learning about the values of our ancestors, I think the culture of the Teutons, you, you couldn't do better. Rob, will there be another European event in the future? Yes, absolutely. Exactly when I can't tell you right now as far as an internet a big international event, but if you want to go over there, we've got uh, we got three AFA kindreds in Sweden. Um, word on the grapevine is we may have a kindred forming in Norway here very soon. So there's events going on over there all the time. If you want to hop on a plane, we can connect you with some great people over in Sweden, in Norway. We've got some great people in Denmark. Um, that's if that's where you're going. We have some others scattered throughout the continent as well. So. You tell me where you're going and I'll get you connected with somebody. Oh, I agree, uh, Michael. Physical locations for Hoffs are a huge part of, of connecting with the divine. Um, that's something that we're very much working on. I've talked a lot with our Gothar about it. Our establishment of these Hoffs and holy places to our gods is 
literally building a bridge to the gods and to, to connect our folk with divinity. And we're, can, we're, um, we're absolutely committed to making that happen and we're gonna continue. Every time we get one done, purchased, paid off, we're gonna move immediately to the next one as long as we have people to support it. So um, we appreciate it. Uh, and we appreciate all of the help that you guys do in, in funding these things and making them happen. Thank you so much. <clears throat> Special message for Brazil. Well, I, always, I already mentioned to you guys, to everyone here, that we're so glad to have you. Um, this is another member of our Brazilian kindred, I believe. And, uh, yeah, that's an amazing, an amazing thing. Like I say, we've had, we've had nothing there. We've had a couple sporadic members in the past at different locations in South America that just kind of come and go and, and don't stay on the radar. Having an official AFA kindred down there is amazing. We would love to help you guys find success the best we can. Um, <clears throat> my message for you guys is to stay connected, to be in contact with us, and for us to try to be in contact with you all as best as we can across borders. It's not just members in, of the AFA of the United States. I encourage our brothers and sisters around the world. Uh, we, we've got AFA members in 15 countries now, and I want us all to be talking to one another and building those bonds and staying strong as a family. So uh, as far as a message to our folks in Brazil, re reach out to other AFA members. Join in, take part, be on things like you're on right now, being part of things. Um, we'll get you guys up, we'll get you guys running, we'll get y'all some more members there and we will watch things flourish in Brazil with your guys' help. Thank you so much for stepping up. Hmm. All right. Well, I'll be sure, Michael. I'll be sure to tell Sean. He will absolutely. He's working on designs for the the next Hoff T-shirt to support the the next Hoff that's happening. So we'll get you all set on that. Um, proceeds for any of those shirts are going to go towards funding that Hoff. So we appreciate it. We'll get you looking good as well. Yes, Brazilians, come visit us. We would love to have you. I'm sure anybody across the, across the United States would love to have you. For that matter, what I said to Rob about going over to Europe, keep that in mind. And I want everybody, um, all of our AFA family on this to, to keep in mind. One of the best things you can do, I'm trying to think of the best way to phrase it, um, something that's a huge blessing that, that I've noticed is when I travel anywhere, now the AFA is spread so far and so thick with members that chances are anywhere you go, you're within you know a short amount of time for some AFA members. Our folk builders would love to get you connected with people any place you're going to travel, any place you're passing through. If you go somewhere for work for a few days, make that effort. Reach out to the local folk builders. Reach out to your folk builder, and they can get you connected with people. Um, it's one of the most special things that we have as the AFA is we've got you guys. We have members all over, all across this country and around the world that we can go visit and see and reach out and your family. They're all part of your AFA family. And that's a very special thing. So I'd encourage any of you guys who are traveling to do that. Elaine, as far as selling AFA polo shirts, um, not really. That's something we've done in the past. Certainly something we could consider, uh, we can consider doing again. Um, yeah, if you have an interest, reach out to Sean and he could probably get some made. Right now, the AFA polo shirts that we have made are, are kind of just for, just for folk builders, but, you know, I don't know. I found that I used to wear the polo shirt a lot for stuff, but I'd rather kick it up a notch and wear a collar and a tie. So that's kind of where I'm at with trying to dress it up a little bit. But as far as getting AFA polos, Sean could probably come up with something and we can talk about that if enough people would like to get them. Mm. Current growth rate of AFA membership. Um, I can say that we're up. We've had a 
53% increase in the last three years. That's the best like rate number I can give you right now. I could probably break that down over the last year a little bit, but I'd be spitballing. But we're up 53% in the last three years. Apparently, Eric is supposed to assist with something. I could not see that question. Mm. All right, so uh, Paul Hester reached out and wants to say, and, and I'm sure this would help a lot of our folk builders, <clears throat> as some of you may have noticed, uh, PayPal has chosen to part ways with the Austria Folk Assembly. So we are moving our membership dues over to Stripe or to the Hoftoller. And I would appreciate everybody who is able to go ahead and get a hold of their folk builders and we'll try to get you transitioned over there as quickly and as smoothly as possible. So far that's been going really well and really smooth. Um, apologize for any inconvenience on it, but uh, that's fine. We've got backups, we've got plans and we'll just move right on over. Um, Thank you guys for everybody who's been cooperative on that. And anybody who wants to pay Hoftoller, reach out to your folk builder. That's a really good way to be secure from, you know, any of that kind of thing. It's a direct deposit or a direct payment from you to our account. It's a percentage-based uh, giving, you know, like the church model that works very well to get things funded. And it helps move us away from the membership model into a more giving a percentage of what you have in a more sharing with our community model. And I think that's where we really want to go in the future and where we want to head towards. Anyone on this call who pays by Hoftoller, I want you guys to know that we appreciate it so very much. It really helps us accomplish things and move the mission forward. And uh, yeah, thank you guys so much. Anyone who's interested in transitioning over to Hoftoller, please reach out to your local folk builder and they would love to get you set up. And uh, yeah, thank you. Hmm. Okay, Ryan, that's a tricky question to see who are most northern, most southern, and most out in the boonies members are. Um, I think as far as kindreds go, their uh, Volkstamm auf dem Nordlika Bear is the most northerly kindred, although they could be equal, you know, it could be equal to some of our Swedish kindreds. I'd have to look on a map to see. Um, and then we have uh, Votan Southern Kindred in Australia that I believe is our furthest south group of members. Now we probably have some uh, individual members that are much further north and we can look into that for you if it's more than a curiosity. Uh, we do have members all the way out in the boonies, um, but we have boonies all over the place we have members hiding in. Uh, but hopefully we can get them some community out there. We've seen that happen too. All right, sounds like some of our Brazilians want to get out to California as soon as possible. Uh, we'd love to have you guys out at Odenshof. Uh, it would be fantastic, and I think it's a it's a special thing. It's an amazing place. It's our Odel property that we have. It is our sacred space that we've been able to carve out here in Midgard for our gods and our folk, and we would love to have you guys join us out there. I like that on the sidelines over there, we're getting things going and Lane is is mobilizing for his study group. That's fantastic. I would encourage anybody that can get to Lane Ashby's study group to go make that happen and be a part of that. Um, if I was anywhere close, I would go and try to support that as well. I'm sure the guys got great things going on there. Oh yeah, Lane's making another point about the Hoftoller. What that does, it cuts out the middleman. It cuts out anybody that wants to get a cut or that wants to stop, you know, our ability to function. The Hoftoller bypasses all of that and goes straight from you guys to us. 
with no problems, no hard times, no, no hiccups. And uh, yeah, it gets stuff. It's really the most effective way to give and support the AFA. Any donations, all of your membership dues and any of your donations to the AFA is always are tax deductible. Um, uh, Verona Qualls could help you understand the best way to utilize that for your taxes probably. Uh, Law Speaker Alan Turnage could also help you with that. But yes, yeah, so you guys know the AFA is a 501c3 church and any of your donations are absolutely tax deductible and we'd be very happy to get you tax ID numbers and anything you need to make that happen. Uh, Matthias, it depends on how you're doing it to get the money there. As far as with the Hoftoller, if you need an account number and a routing number, there's also, I believe, like an international number. If you ask any of your folk builders, you ask me after this, I can get you set up. We got the account number, the routing number, the little international number. With those things, you should be able to get the payments to us, no problem on that. We'd get that all squared away. And if that's something you're considering doing, I thank you in advance for thinking about it. Apparently we've got folks laughing at boonies. Hmm. So anybody who wasn't here at the beginning of the call, something I want to keep uh, keep hammering home. If you're in the northeast part of the United States, or if you're in anywhere and you want to make it out, uh, Freyfaxi in Massachusetts on the 17th of August. I'm going to be flying out. Cliff Erickson and his lovely wife, Katie, are going to be driving up for it. We're going to be celebrating, having a great day, enjoying each other's company. It's going to be a, a potluck, and it's going to be fantastic. I'm really looking forward to it, and I want as many people out there as can possibly be there so I can meet you all, if I've already met you, so that I can spend more time with you and get to know you better, and so that we can all get together as a family and worship our gods. Um, that's going to be a great event. It's really going to be fantastic. Our local kindred up there is putting a lot of themselves into it, and I want to help them be successful and build that community. So anybody who can make it to Freyfaxi in Massachusetts, let's do it. Uh, Matthias, as far as I know, you just need those numbers. It's just like transferring money to a person's account. But... Uh, the account is under the Alsa True Folk Assembly's name, Alsa True Folk Assembly. Uh, but those numbers should get you where you need to go. <clears throat> Does anybody else have questions or anything they want to have me talk about tonight or anything they're curious about they want to discuss? Um, if you do, please speak up. I would love to, love to hear from you and love to give you an answer best I can. And like I said, if I'm missing anybody, if I'm not getting comments, I'm going to go back through all of these things uh, tonight after the call, and I'll do my best to answer them. I don't want to leave anybody out, and it's it's tricky on this to find out, um, to get all of the comments. It's very strange because some of the comments are coming in, and some of them I don't get until after until afterwards. So... I am taking a look really quick because I get different notifications on my phone than I do over here as far as who's saying what. Um, Something else that I'll, I'll mention while we're here is I want anybody who can, and this may be easier for some of you guys to make it to, to come on out to Fall Fest in Minnesota. We've got that coming up the first weekend in, uh, in September. It's the fourth Fall Fest. It is fantastic. I love Fall Fest. I love our members up there. Our Northern Plains members are some of our very best members. It is an amazing event. I, it's been my honor and privilege to be at all of the Fall Fests. And uh, like I say, it's the fourth, fourth year. They only get better. Um, 
So come on out. I would love to meet you guys there. We would love to celebrate together. Fall Fest is an amazing thing that I would encourage anybody to go to. Uh, I would encourage any of our AFA family to go to and vouch for guests. And if you guys can make that up there, that would be fantastic. Uh, Blaine Qualls and Jason Gallagher do a great job putting that on. And, you know, I, I want to support them any way possible. Like I said, it's something that we look forward to all year. They're fantastic people, and it's a fantastic event. And there's very often a uh, tater tot hot dish. If you haven't had tater tot hot dish, you are missing out, and you need to acquire some at your earliest possible convenience and eat it because it's amazing. Great, and uh, north wind cold, y'all in Brazil, if you need help, if there's anything that the rest of the AFA can do to help you build in Brazil or to make you guys feel more connected because you guys are a, a very important part of our AFA family. So if there's anything we can do to be helpful to you, um, we would love to. Please let me know. Reach out to me or Sheila McNallan is your folk builder for your area right now. So anything we can do to be helpful, please let us know. Uh, you guys are an AFA kindred. You guys are here for us. We are certainly all here for you as well. Um, thanks, Jessica. That's sweet. Uh, me and Mandy really appreciate that. Uh, Terry, you're very welcome. I love putting all that uh, archival material on the AFA website. It is a blessing to have so much of that. Um, the source for the vast, you know, the vast trove of things that we have has come from the, uh, the personal collection of Robert Taylor. He gifted that a number of years ago to Brad Taylor Hicks, and Brad has, has lent that to us for a long time now for us to be able to digitize and get that out. And we're extremely appreciative of Brad and of Robert preserving those things. If it wasn't for them, we would not have them. We would not have them on the site, and we would not have them preserved for you guys. So <clears throat> big thanks to them. And uh, yeah, it's been an honor being able to put those on the site, and it's been really special to read through them and look at where we've come from, the things we were doing then, and how we got to where we are now. Um, that's our history, guys. So if you can go to uh, RuneStone, look at our library, and, and look at those, uh, those downloads. You click on it, it opens up a PDF, and none of them are super long, but they're, they're really special. So I'd encourage you guys all to go take a look at them. Hey, Blaine. Ah, Haminya and the AFA. No, I have not, and I think that's a good thing for us to talk about. One of the, one of the most important things with what we're doing as a church and what we're doing as the AFA family is building a powerful collective Haminya. Um, by us building the AFA strong, and by building upon all of the Hamenia that was built in those rune stones that I just talked about over, you know, the past forever many years ago, all the way back since the 80s I have on there. Specifically, the Austro Folk Assembly that started in 1995. We build upon that Hamenia by us coming together, worshiping the gods together and being unified. We all get to be part of that AFA Hamenia. Our spiritual might is increased. Our standing before the gods is increased. By us standing together under the trihorns, we're in a position that the gods take notice of, that I believe that they truly appreciate and are blessed. And by us being part of the AFA and by us standing together, we share in that powerful hominia. Um, just in a brief sense, when we do Sumble and we all share that Hamenia together, we all lay those layers in the well together. It makes us all stronger. When you are a member of the Austro Folk Assembly, when your kindred is a kindred in the Austro Folk Assembly, that little bit we get during Sumble is a thousandfold. We stand strong and unified as a force before our gods, proud and worshiping them, serving their purpose standing tall as their sons and daughters in Midgard. And that's something really special. And it's something that, that folks miss out on if they're just a group of you know, 
four guys in their backyard. I mean, I'm, I appreciate what they do, and I think it's great, but it's something very different when we stand together as a unified church before our gods. It's, it's a much different thing, and I'm very blessed to be able to be a part of it, and I thank you guys for being a part of it with me. Okay, Ryan, I'm, I'm hoping I'm understanding your question. You're asking about the reps that I'm doing each day of the week and what type and maybe challenge folk to keep up with their folk builders and folk builders to keep up with me. I think that you were talking about lifting. Uh, that's fantastic. If you are, we should all get in better shape. It is our duty to be the best we can be at all things health-wise, physically. That means getting in good shape. It means evaluating where we're at and becoming better. Um, if you're interested, I hope that you're part of the Physical Excellence Group. I will up my game on there and post my current routine. I've posted a lot of routines on there before, but I will get better at doing that, and I will try to. I will make a point of doing that here, and we can see. And yeah, uh, Ryan put out that challenge, so I assume that Ryan is going to try to keep up with me. Let's hope. And uh, yeah, that's fantastic. I'm glad you're taking an interest in that, Ryan. And I encourage everybody, no matter where you're at, let's all get better. That's what I'm going to do tomorrow. That's what I hope we're all going to do. And it's not about, you know, going from zero to excellence in a day. What it's about is being a little bit better, a little bit faster, a little bit stronger, a little bit leaner, a little bit bigger than you were yesterday and moving upward and upward and upward towards our very best selves. And I would encourage us all to do that. And that's a good reminder, Ryan. I will get on there and post on physical excellence more often and try to try to encourage you guys with what I'm doing. And look, and I have been looking at all the things you guys are sharing that you're doing. And it's really exciting to see. You're very welcome. Uh, welcome, Michael. There's nothing in this world I would rather do. It is the greatest honor of my life to be able to be else. Here you go, the, the Austria Folk Assembly. You are very, very welcome. Absolutely, uh, Terry, when, when a kindred gathers, every time we gather before our gods as a unified folk doing something, we make each other and our group a little bit stronger. Now, maybe a lot stronger depending on what we're doing. Every little bit counts to bring us together and keep us strong. And kindreds having frequent activities and frequent time they get together. Maybe they're just getting together for a meal. Maybe they're just all going to see a movie or go bowling. Them getting together, us getting together, every time makes us stronger than we were before. Every time builds us, makes us a little bit better, gets us closer to where we're trying to go. And I think that's great advice, and I thank you for bringing it up. Tater tot hot dish, it's a thing. What is the recipe? Um, you should ask Robin. Uh, Mandy should get you guys together, Mary. You should ask Robin, and I would encourage you to cook tater tot hot dishes as often as possible because it's amazing, and I ate way too much of it at last Fall Fest than I probably should have, but it was fantastic. I think I had a whole one of those pans all to myself. Mm. Well, it looks like uh, Matthias Futhark is giving you some advice, Mary. Um, everything I'm seeing sounds sounds legitimate and like a good tater tot hot dish. I'm not an expert, but I do hope to become one. Eric, glad that you joined us. Um, so we've tonight has gone really quickly. Um, we're coming up on an hour. That's usually how long this goes. If you guys have more questions and more things you want to discuss, I'll stay on until folks get it out of their system and we get everything off uh, off our chest that we need to. But uh, barring any more questions or whatever, we're probably going to wrap it up here soon. So if there's anything you guys want to ask or make sure it gets said or make sure it gets mentioned, please do please do reach out. Um, like I say, I'm very happy to answer anything. And if there's folks on here that 
like I say, if your questions didn't get got, it's frustrating because I'm trying really hard to take everybody's questions live. And inevitably, after every show, we have a few people that will have asked something that just didn't didn't come through on my end. And I want you to know I'm not I'm not ducking you. I'm not ignoring you, certainly. And I'll go back over and I will try to answer everything I can answer because I care and I appreciate you guys taking the effort to come on here and ask questions and reach out. Um, yeah, like I say, I look forward to this every month. I love talking to you guys. So very cool. Uh, Raven's blood is representing really strong on here tonight. Uh, that's that's great to see. Um, so I appreciate you reminding me on that. So Matthias Boothark wants me to say, please go, please donate at www.roomstone.org. Go to our donation links. We still are very much accepting funds to distribute to the cat, uh, to the folks in the camps in South Africa, to the uh, white farmers and folks that have been displaced and grossly persecuted for being part of our folk. Those people always need help. And now we've got folk in South Africa that are able to go into camps and distribute those resources ourselves in-house as AFA members. Please go donate to that. We always, always need funds and folk services. One of the most special things we are able to do as a church is to support our own when they have hard times. Is to be able to take care of our people when they come upon something unexpected. It's been really special that we're able to do that. And the only way we can do it is the generous donations that you guys do. So I'd encourage you to donate to that. And Hoff number two, it is coming. It is coming quick. It will come quicker the more you guys donate. Uh, we can always use help and finances on making that happen. And I promise you that our folk in the Northern Plains, myself, members of our Witten, we are literally working daily to get that closer and to make that happen. It's coming. I've told you it's going to happen by next midsummer, and we're going to make that happen. So please do donate to those things. Uh, we really appreciate you guys' generosity. As you know, that's the only way we can get stuff done. Nobody likes to talk about money, but I appreciate when I ask and we put it out there, you guys answer the call. You guys are generous and you guys help out so much. Very, very appreciated. All right, guys. Well, <clears throat> any last minute things? Anybody got questions or anything they want to talk about or want to make sure that I mention something about? I appreciate you guys tonight. I thank you guys all for coming out and asking and being part of stuff. Um, thank you guys so much. Uh, like I say, anybody who can make it out to Freyfax in Massachusetts, please do. I would love to see you guys there. If you can't, or if you can, please make it to Fall Fest. Would love to see you there also. Hope you guys have an absolutely amazing August. Um, I look forward to talking to you again first Thursday of hmm, first Thursday of September. I may be on the way to Fall Fest. We may do it a little bit earlier next month. Thank you guys so much for coming out. Um, I appreciate you guys. Thank you. Hail the gods. Hail the folk. Hail the AFA. You guys have a good night.